one of my viewers had a question regarding that they had the same Moza uh, eye focus with the Moza Cross 2 and uh, they were having difficulties hooking that up and getting that going so I'm going to go through that little process for you now. Once you have it set though, uh, sometimes you plug it in and it just works as you can see uh, right off the bat you'll watch the the dial rotate so it's already connected to the rotation of my uh, wheel here so you'll see that works just fine and uh, the way to go about that is to make sure that you have from the get-go as you saw me assemble this uh, you want to make sure that you have it plugged in <laughs> that that is we, we've got to go back to the basics so if your car doesn't start, there's a problem with that, you look to see if there's gas in it. Uh, you know, then you look to see if there's a battery in it to turn the engine, that sort of thing. So you go from uh, the base factors up. So if, if your eye focus isn't working uh, or you're not able to connect it, make sure that you do have it plugged in. So there's two different outlets here uh, for that plug to uh, try either one, uh, but either one should work. On your stabilizer screen, you'll see F1 in a square, meaning that it is set to control follow focus. The larger F1 or F2 indicates that you have either the first or a second follow focus motor attached. The Aircross 2 can actually use two follow focus motors. The other thing is to make sure it is plugged into the device itself and that you have it turned on. So the button here underneath, you press and hold that until you get this color. You have a green indicating. You can also get blue when charging, I believe. Uh, but this color indicator indicates that it is on and is functioning. So then the other thing is making sure that you do have it connected to the camera to where gear is touching gear. And if you don't have um, if you don't have a lens that has a proper gear, then you get one of these and you create that so that it can put that up there and you get the proper gear ratio and all that. So it fits in the grooves perfectly. Uh, the other thing then is if everything there is working fine, then we have to connect this process to the wheel itself. And so we're going to go through the menu here a little bit. You're going to press and hold that red button for two seconds about. You're going to go down to gimbal, then tap over to the side. You've got motor, follow, and operation. We're going to go to operation because we're changing the operation of either the joystick or the wheel itself. And in this case, it's the wheel going to go through here. We're going to make its function focus one, focus two, or focus three. So I have it set to focus one. You click and just make sure that that's turned on. As soon as you do that, you can tap all the way back out and your follow focus wheel should automatically be working. So I'm going to turn here for a second. Rotate that on the side. So that should make that work. And that also allows you, you can control how much you're going to adjust that as well. So one, two, gimbal, operation, when you work it to, the wheel. This is where you can adjust your sensitivity. So sensitivity is like 100. As, as soon as you touch it, it starts rotating, which is what I prefer. Uh, but you can certainly uh, adjust that by rolling the wheel to whatever sensitivity you want. So if you need something that's a really smooth roll in for focus, like if I bring that down, let's take this down here. like that, you'll see that as I rotate this wheel, I could rotate it really fast and it's going to do just a very mild and it'll take a second to even go into it. So that way you can control how much um, smooth focus that you're going to put in there. If I crank that all the way back up, you'll see the difference. 
when I make that 100, which is what I prefer, it's instantly. It's as soon as you rotate it, that's what comes into play. That's the thing that you need to do. Um, if you have any other questions, I'll see what I can do to help you, but if you troubleshoot all the pathway to the device and then, then work the wheel, uh, then that should cover everything. If you are still having a problem, sometimes uh, tapping once on that uh, button on the side here, there's a button that basically uh, you can put a double tap and it'll go to sleep so that there, this is just free floating and relaxing. Then you tap it twice again and it locks it back into the actual control. So sometimes if you're pressing this button, that will stop this from working. It's a feature, not a, not a bug. So uh, in case, I guess, if you need to turn that off or you need to shift that wheel to having this control the roll and the pitch instead of uh, the wheel. Uh, controlling the actual follow focus. So that is something that uh, is actually a feature. That was hopefully helpful to people who have a problem with that. So I do have, because I am working with this on the far side of the cage or the far side of the camera, because that's just where I happen to have it for the, the manual uh, focus pull. I can also turn this and move it over here onto this side. Because it's on that side, I counterbalance it with these extra two weights. And these are, again, small rig, this little mounting thing. And you get two weights with that, or you get a number of weights, depending on. But you can get these individually as well. You can see how easy that is to balance it once you have them all together and you get an idea of how much you have to counterbalance what's going on in the front. This is a heavier rig but now I can put this on the other side of the device if I need to, and I can also roll it back over here. I can also mount that on top, so I can have the follow focus put on top. There are mounting brackets for that as well. And please thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Help grow our channel. Thank you.